So I don't do that. Revelation. Uh, God gave me an idea for a message this morning, a Christmas message yesterday because it dawned on me I asked Lisa I'll, I'll wait I'll wait till the message I'll wait till the message but God gave me a good idea for a message this morning and I, I if you get something out of it praise the Lord but I know I've already got something out of it I, I when I started studying it I got I got, was started, I was getting so much out of it, I thought, man, I'm going to have to cut this off at some point, or I'll preach till two. And um, it was good. It, really, it was a good study. It really was. And when I tell you about it this morning during the message, you'll understand. And, and I want to encourage you to do that study in the Bible. And I'll tell you what that was in a little bit. Uh, where was we in Revelation 4? Uh, we got, I think we got down to verse 5. I think that's what we got to. Let's see here. Where was I in my notes? Yeah, I think we did that. Well, no, we didn't. Let's do that. Uh, Revelation chapter 4. Verse 5, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there was, and remember, John is, is in the spirit now, not in the flesh, he's in the spirit. And he come, a voice says, come up hither. And he said, immediately I was in the spirit. His spirit was caught up into heaven, the third heaven. He is... One of how many people that's seen heaven? I think we did this already before. There's a wasp flying around right there. Um, Stephen saw it before he died. It was either Paul or somebody Paul knew in 2 Corinthians 12 that was caught up to the third heaven, saw things up there. Paul didn't really tell who it was, whether it was him or somebody else that saw it. And um, uh, Ezekiel got to see the throne come down from heaven to him. John gets to see it in the spirit. Those who we know were in Christ who have passed on, we know that they are seeing it now. Amen. That's our comfort and uh, one of these days, we are going to get to see it. Amen. And when we see it, I promise you, we won't be going, you know, I'm missing football down back on earth. Can I go back? We won't do that, cubby. Amen. We won't be doing that. So anyway, John's describing what he's seeing. He said, I saw the 24, 24 seats upon the... Uh, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. We're going to cover that in a little bit. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Verse 5, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And I always like to go over this when, when I touch on this. The seven spirits of God are mentioned in what book? Yep, I only tell you every time I talk about it. Isaiah 53. For he shall, who hath believed, oh no, Isaiah 11, thank you. Had my mind on something else. I only tell myself every now and then. We were watching, my mom, we were, my mom's last night, and she had, she had some old video cassettes out. She had a video cassette recording of a concert that me and my sister did that I don't remember doing. But there we were. I mean, we did a whole show. We did like, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 songs, something like that, down in uh, 47th Street Baptist Church down in North Little Rock, Arkansas, or Levy, Arkansas. And this was 1997, I think. And they were having their homecoming. And I have no remembrance. Of, I'm looking at that and I'm going, that's me and my sister. I have no, I have no idea that I went down there and did that. 
I'm losing it. I'm telling you, I'm losing it. Isaiah 11. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. That's seven spirits of God right there. tells you that right there in the Bible. Later on in Revelation 5, we're going to learn some more about those seven spirits of God. So I'm kind of holding back some things right now. But look up on the screen. This is a replica of the wilderness tabernacle candlestick. It had seven pipes on it. Those seven candles or those seven pipes represent the seven spirits of God. They were, listen to this now. They were the only light in the tabernacle. There was no windows. The, the door was shut all the time. When the high priest went in, he would be in total darkness. Listen to this. He would be in total darkness if it wasn't for those seven candlesticks. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The seven spirits of God come to us by way of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. You are in total darkness if you are lacking the Word of God in your life. Now I'm talking about the Bible Word of God. Not some way out up in heaven, something we can't get to Word of God. I'm talking about the, the one that John said... The one we've handled with our hands. The word of life. John chapter, 1 John chapter 1 verse 1. The seven spirits of God will come out of this book. And you, I'm telling you, you are in darkness. If you're not in this book. Somebody say amen. And, and, here, and this is proof. This is proof right here. Because as God told Moses how to make this, he wrote, I mean, very detailed, exactly what he wanted on there. He said, it's going to be like a tree. It's going to be like an almond tree, and it's going to have seven branches on it. And on each branch, it's going to have a knop, a flower, and a bud. Three decorations, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. These three are one. So... Each set of decorations could be counted as one. Now there's a total of 22 sets of decorations on this. This is what we said last week, last Sunday, Sunday morning before we cut it off. 22 is the number for Revelation. You're in the book of Revelation. And it's being described to you that way. But then when we break it down further, each set of decorations has three parts to it. A, a, a bud... A knob, or a knop, the Bible says, and flower. As, as like a budding almond tree. Does that ring a bell to you? Aaron's rod that budded. The almond tree. Okay? Those are all biblical ideas. And so, here we have three decorations on the first candle... And then below it, three more decorations on the first candle. Then below it, three more decorations on the first candle. So we got three, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the first candle. Second candle, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Third candle, that little bitty one right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we have nine here, nine here, nine here, what do we have? Tw three times three is what? Twenty-seven. How many books are in the New Testament? I just said it. Twenty-seven. Imagine that. So now we go to the other side here. Three, but, three decorations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 27 over here, but we got, we got to count the middle. And there's four on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what is 27 plus 12? What is it? 
39. How many books are in the Old Testament? 39. How many decorations do you have total together? 66. Woo! They got, Lord, give them light. God, God secretly told Moses how many books there were going to be in the Bible. Thousands of years ago. Six, at, listen, believe it or not, the Protestants, Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, the three major groups of Christianity, and the Protestants are the only group who have the Bible right. The Catholic Bible has like 71 books in it. The Eastern Orthodox Bible has like, I don't know, 80-something in it or something like that. But out of the three major branches of Christianity, Protestant, Roman Catholic, Christian, uh, Eastern Orthodox, we're the only ones that got the right number of books in the Bible according to that candlestick right there. So the whole deal, the whole symbolism of this picture is telling you that if you want the Holy Spirit, read your Bible. You don't you say, well, I don't believe that. That's not how they did it in the Old, in the New Testament, in the early church days. I don't believe that. Well, turn your Bible then to Galatians chapter 3, and I'll prove it to you. Call me a liar. I'll just open up a big can of King James Bible verses on you. <laughs> I feel cocky this morning, and that's probably not good. Galatians 3. Oh, foolish Galatians. Yeah, I'm looking right at you. Who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only when I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith. Woo! You understand that? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, if you go to a church and they tell you that now, okay, you're saved now, but you've got to get the Holy Ghost. So, stand up, raise your hands. And start saying hallelujah 20 times real fast in a row. Or get up and run around the church. Believe me. Out here in the woods. Franklin County, Washington County. Down around Potosi. There's some wacky Pentecostal churches on every hill out there. And I had my deacon down at Richwoods tell me. That one of them churches down, I mean way down there in the woods. He went and visited, and that's what they were doing. Everybody got up at the beginning of the service, started running around the pews. What are you doing? So we're bringing in the Holy Spirit. Just running around, the, just running around. Or they get, you know what they do in East Tennessee, pull out snakes. How do you get the Holy Spirit? By faith, by the hearing. Paul said, not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of of faith when you got saved a preacher's preaching the word of god you come down to the altar or whatever it was a preacher came to your house or whatever it was and gave you the word of god and the holy ghost got in you and caused you to repent of your sins and god filled you that moment with his holy spirit because the word went in you am i telling the truth amen Boy, I love this. Now, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I'm telling you, if you are without the word of God, you're walking in darkness. Uh, so now verse 2. Notice this. Immediate, uh, back in Revelation chapter 4. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. We touched on that. Now verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne 
And round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now, we reread Ezekiel 1, and we talked about that last Sunday. But 2 Corinthians 1, 22, now watch this. You're, the Bible is going to tell us that our heart is the throne. Our heart is. Because where is, is, is it a biblical, co- and I've, I, there's a guy on YouTube right now, he's an idiot, he's a Calvinist nut job who says that if you say that you ask Jesus into your heart, you're not saved. He's a big, fat, dopey, idiot liar. I'm telling you, I'm feeling cocky this morning. I hope God brings me down. So watch this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So we have a sea of glass, and the four beasts full of eyes before and behind around the throne. Now, 2 Corinthians 1.22 does Christ, the Spirit of Christ, abide in our hearts when we're saved? 2 Corinthians 1, Who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our, what? Hearts. Where does the Spirit dwell? Right now, Gary, right now, according to this, where is the earnest of the Spirit at? In our hearts. And our heart is not just the beating Blood giving thing of our body, I believe it is the connection to the human soul. The connection to the human soul, the, or who we really are on the inside. When, they, when you hear in movies and commercials and TV shows where people say, Follow your heart now, follow your heart, don't do that. You know why? The heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Don't follow your heart. Your heart will lead you to hell. Follow, if you've got Christ, follow the Spirit in your heart. 2 Corinthians 3, 3. You might want to Underline these verses in your Bible because listen, we're living in an age of social media where lies are coming in at 120 miles an hour every day. Light speed. People telling you it's a cur- it's that's that's blasphemy to say that uh, Christ is in your heart. The Bible never says that. That's a, that you got to watch out for these people. I'm telling you, they will steal souls away. Second Corinthians three three. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Where is the Word of God abiding right now? Thy Word have I hid, where? In my heart. It's, that's the word of God ruling in your heart. This is why you didn't murder somebody this week. How many of you know somebody that you would like to murder? No, you don't have to raise your hand. But I'm going to be honest. I got a few people on my list. What has kept me from murdering them? The word of God ruling out of my heart. Say, Mike, don't you do that. Don't you do that. What has kept you from running out on your family this week? The word of God ruling in your heart. Somebody say amen. What has kept, what made you get up, come church today? The word of God ruling in your heart. I, I didn't call you and say, if you don't show up, I'm going I'm to throw you out, D. I'm going to throw you out. No, get back here. Stay. He didn't get up, get, answer the phones. Uh-oh, Brother Mike threatened me. If I don't show up, I, he's going to kick me out. The Word of God, the Spirit of the living God, written not in tables of stone. It's not like the law. 
but with fleshy tables of the heart. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. The face of Jesus Christ shines like the sun on Matthew 17, Revelation 10. The typology of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai and his face shining so bright they couldn't look at it. That's a picture of Christ. So here's this, the, uh, a light as bright as the sun or brighter shining in our hearts. And what is it doing there? It's showing us how wicked and evil we really are. And then what do we do about that? We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We turn ourselves to God and say, God, I, I know what's in my heart. Don't let me do what's in my heart. God, hold me back. God, keep me from doing that. God, keep me away from that stuff. Keep me straight. Keep me honest. Keep me right. God, do those things in my, my heart. My heart is wicked, God. It wants to turn away from you. My flesh is wicked, God. Crucify my flesh so that I can be with you forever. Amen. Colossians 3.15. Here's this is what nails it for me. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. What does rule mean? Be in charge. The boss. The king. The king lifts his hand and his attendants know exactly what to do. His servants know exactly what to do. And that's how we are. The Bible says that. We're like servants at our, at our Lord's hand waiting for him to just raise his hand so we can do what he wants us and bids us to do. I got something to, I got something to tell you people. I, did I tell them Wednesday? If you ever doubted these radio stations in Kenya, and Michael and I both have doubted whether or not we should run them. Both of us have. Am I right, Michael? Yep, I got a thumbs up. Out of all the trouble we had last year with a guy almost this close to stealing everything that we built over there, both radio stations, the whole ministry, was just a few pages away, documents away, from being gone forever. And God intervened at the right time. The guy who did it has been stopped. Michael woke up the other night with a message from Kenya. He looked at it and said, I don't want to read it, and went back to sleep. He should have read it. Because the Kenya Communication Authority, which is like the FCC in this country, shut down, I said the wrong number the other day, 120 radio stations all over Kenya this week shut them down for non-compliance with their license. There are now only two radio stations in Samburu and Turkana, and both of them are ours, running in both places. <laughs> Listen, if God wanted those shut down, that's, it would have been done just like that. Because they shut down every radio station in Turkana and Samburu except ours. That's God ruling in our hearts. That's God laying it so thick. No, I want to tell you how this started. God laying it so thick on Michael's heart, and he keeps bugging me about it and won't, and won't let up. And then his grandmother, Mama Michael's mama, godly woman, called Michael that morning and said, Michael, God has told me that a blessing is going to come your way today. He said, okay, Grandma. And him and Alicia come upstairs, both of them sat down and begged me,
please let me run a radio station over there. I, and I said, Michael, if I do it, I can't run it. He said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. You should have said that, Michael. Don't worry. I'll take care of everything. And I gave him the permission that day. And he started, he started bawling because he had remembered what his grandma had told him that morning. Brother George, that morning. She knew God had told her to tell her grandson, God's going to give you something you've been asking for. And listen, and I'm not, I am not saying anything about I did this, I kept this going. I have not, I have not operated nor interfered in those radio stations at all other than to give Michael permission to do this, do that, and give him money. But that's God's blessing. That's God's proof that we're doing the right thing. Because we could have been shut down just like that. Because when they came by in Turkana, we were not operating at the time. We, the guys were putting the pieces back together, and they explained to the commission authority that what had happened and they knew the story and they said okay get everything together because we'll be back by again to inspect and we're operating now 24 hours a day seven days a week full operation in Turkana now finally and Samburu and there's only two they, they only have a in Samburu they only have a choice one radio station to listen to and the Catholic Church who tried to start a radio station called Watchman FM, which was our name. And they poured in, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in this new station and everything. They lost everything. Shut it down. Shut it down. And we, we were going to sue. We were thinking about suing that, that Catholic station for, for copyright violation for stealing our name. And it was like God said, you don't have to. I'll take care of it. That just makes me trust God more. Amen? Let the God of, notice this, the God of peace. Michael came over giddy that morning to tell me, guess what? And he told me that. He said, I, I looked saw something, and he said, I just put my phone down because I thought this is bad news. I don't want to know it. I'm going to sleep. And when he got up the next morning, he looked at it and went, oh! couldn't believe it. Let the God of peace rule in your hearts. Are you hearing me? Not the God of strife. Not the God of war. The God of peace. What is Jesus called? What was he prophesied to be called? The prince of peace that's who he is he's the prince he rules in our hearts amen to the which also you're called in one body and be ye thankful be thankful that you belong one body is a family one body is a family I'm setting you up for the sermon this morning okay I'm going to preach on families. Families. Bell ring. I'll pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your kindness, your goodness, the unmerited blessing that we do not deserve. As your people, God, thank you. We love you. Father, I... I would keep serving you if you closed everything down. I would keep serving you. And some days, Lord, you know I can't say that. Some days, God, you know I can't. I'm not so sure. But you're still there anyway. And you are the God of peace. And I thank you for ruling in our hearts. Bless your people this morning. Bless this morning's service. Bless the 
sermon. Father, humble me this morning. Use me for your kingdom's sake and your glory's sake. Get me, get me in my flesh out of the way and let your spirit, let the preacher preach this morning to your people. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.